that either would violate our policies or might not be fit for young children or something like that. Okay, I want to throw in another one from the thread um, really quickly, Mark. It comes from Rex Way, and he's asking, out of curiosity, who is your favorite scientist and why? Do I only get one? I, I, we, can, we can expand. <laughs> All right, well, here. It's got to be Maxwell, All right, James Maxwell. Uh, and the reason is, so in the 1860s, uh, this physicist, James Maxwell, wrote the unified theory of um, like all electromagnetism. And so much of the modern world that we have uh, comes from his work, right? I mean, everything that you use that's electronics, um, everything that is kind of sending a signal to communicate wirelessly over the air, that's him, right? And in, in the work that he did, and um, simply, you know, if you, if you care about the internet and you care about communication and you like the modern world that we live in, uh, then you kind of need to be thankful for James Maxwell every day. Uh, and... And I think out of, the, out of the great physicists, he's probably one of the least appreciated. Um, and, and I think that he deserves that. But there, there's an important lesson here, I think, which is that his work took 50, you know, 100 years to really have a major impact on the world. And that's a pretty common thing in basic science. And it makes me wonder to some degree uh, if we are ambitious enough as a society today around what the scientific goals that we have uh, for the next generation. Uh, because you know, the basic science that we do today is not going to have an applied effect on, on our world um, in the very near term. But you, know, I mean, you look at things like, like I spend some time thinking about disease. right? And um, you know, as a society, we only really started trying to cure all the diseases about 200 years ago. right? And technology has, has accelerated, and we've gotten a lot better. So there's a question of like, OK, in 50 or 100 years, should we be able to cure all the things that people die from? Uh, probably. But right? I think we can. I think we have a good shot at it. Um, and you know, if we can, and, and we have the ability to do that, then don't we kind of have a responsibility to focus on that a bit more? We spend, as a society, 50 times more money uh, on healthcare, treating people who are sick today, than we spend trying to cure the diseases in the first place, so that people don't even get sick, right? So, and you know, if you if you believe that people were always going to get sick, then uh, then you know maybe that's a right balance, right? And and that's fine. But but if you actually believed that in our children's time or their children's time, there was actually the ability to make basic advances in science that could cure those diseases, then I kind of think we have a responsibility to do more there. And I think Maxwell um, shows that that. You know, it's not, you don't, he figured this out, uh, the, the electromagnetic theory, and, and it took a while before that, that really shaped the world. Um, if we have time for another, um, I, there, there are other scientists who I think are, are worthy as well. Um, there's, there's a, one of my favorite stories is there was this man who grew up in India um, named Srinivasa Ram, Ramanujan. And uh, he, he grew up, he was poor. Um, he didn't have access to the internet. There wasn't the internet at the time. He, uh, he didn't have any formal education. Uh, but somehow he managed to get a book. He, he got a math textbook. And you know, it didn't cover all math. It, it just covered a part. But that textbook was enough for him to basically figure out all of modern mathematics that had existed at that time and push the field forward. And you know, so I kind of think about this. and. Um, you know, what would have happened if he'd had access to the internet? Right? I mean, how much better, if, if we'd invested in that kind of infrastructure and connectivity, how much better off would the world be? And, and then you kind of think today, well, more than half of people in the world don't have access to the internet. Right? And that's why, you know, at Facebook, we're working on projects like internet.org to try to make it so that every single person has access to the internet. I mean, how many more Ramanujans are out there um, who could deliver really amazing things for the whole world if they had access to, to that kind of infrastructure and if we as a society invested in that. So I don't know, this is something that I, that I feel really strongly about. And